Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you have joined us today. Today's video, we're going to revisit some of the old-fashioned ways that we use to save money. With today's prices constantly rising, everyone looking for a way to save a dollar here and there, these are tried and true ways to actually save money, have a wonderful life, and live below your means. It's just good common sense to look back at how our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents did it. And if we apply those concepts today, we will definitely save money. The first thing we're going to show you is how to add some real beauty to your life for a fraction of the retail cost of what we would pay for these items. The other day, my brother called me and said, get to Tractor Supply Store now. And we were like, what's going on? We're gonna show you what we bought and how we encourage you to keep your eye out for these items this time of year and what to do with them once you buy them. So Paul is gonna take over right now. Let's get outside. This is what the table looked like at Tractor Supply. It was just loaded with hyacinths and tulips, all having seen better days. So this is our Tractor Supply haul. One dollar for each plant. They don't have any flowers anymore, but guess what? They're gonna come back year after year with just a little bit of help and these bulbs are going to be beautiful. We plant these around our yard, our garden. You can put it in the grass, and before the grass needs to be mowed, you could have flowers up. So it's a pretty neat idea. Let me show you over here what I did with a small crocus. Now this little crocus comes up every year. Obviously the grass doesn't need to be mowed yet, but the flower that it put out was beautiful. This just comes back every year. Then when I mow the grass, I just mow right over them. There he is. We ended up purchasing purple, yellow, and red tulips. And we also got two hyacinths. The first thing you want to do is deadhead the flowers. And what we're going to do is just go down and cut these off. Taking the flower, the stalks off of the bulbs will help the bulbs rejuvenate themselves instead of sending all their energy to try to get those flowers to grow. Now we're gonna pull the bulbs out of the dirt. Now I'm going to shake the dirt off of the bulbs and separate the bulbs from the dirt. Now the root system is all twisted together, so you just wanna pull them apart gently. But I will reuse this soil after I take the roots out and put it around my flower garden to help rejuvenate that. That's so I have here about a quarter bucket of the dirt that came with our flower bulbs. And I do not want to use this in our compost for our vegetable gardens because I don't know what's in here. I see fertilizer. These are for flowers. So what better place to put this dirt is right in our flower garden. I'm just going to sprinkle this around the plants that are already growing and just give it a little bit of nourishment to that soil. So let's do that now. As you can see, these are the bulbs in the root system. What we're going to do now is let these dry out a little bit in the sun. You also want to gently brush off some of the dirt that's on the bulbs. Keeping the dirt off the bulb is important. Use a very soft brush and gently do this to all the bulbs. Here's an added bonus. Some of the bulbs had little bulbs coming off of them. These are just as plantable as the bigger ones, so put these in your garden also. Extra plants, extra beauty. And now for the hyacinths, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna deadhead the flowers, we're gonna pull out the bulbs, brush them off, and get them ready for storage for the summer. Mm -hmm. 
So I have them laying out on this path in my yard in the sun. This way the sun can dry up the bulbs just a little bit. We don't want the bulbs too dry, but we would like to have it so the dirt kind of falls off. They were pretty wet. They were outside at the tractor supply and we've had a lot of heavy rains here. So there was a lot of water in these pots. So. So we let the bulbs dry for about a half an hour in the sunlight just to get some of the moisture down. And I brushed off most of the dirt. And now I just placed them in these boxes. What we want to do now is put this in a cool, dry place. And the bulb will start taking the nutrients out of its own leaves to help keep it alive. At that point, those leaves will dry up and turn yellow. And then we will take the yellow leaves off by trimming them. We'll show you that in an upcoming video. And then these bulbs will be ready to go into a storage bag and hung in a cool, dark place until fall when we plant them for spring next year. And for an added bonus, we got seven pots we can reuse to grow basil or some herbs or even transplant plants to bring to friends' houses. These are great. Look at them. They actually say number five in the little triangle, if you can see it, meaning they're perfect for growing food-grade plants. This is an added bonus. What a great bargain. We have so many beautiful bulbs now that we can plant this fall. And come next spring, we are going to have an array of yellow, red, and purple tulips and purple hyacinths for pennies. All we have to do is put a little work into it. Yes, you could go out and buy bulbs come the fall and plant them. They are going to be so much more expensive. And this way, you have the knowledge of how to do it. You have the satisfaction of knowing you did it yourself. We got the extra planters, which are going to be great for planting herbs. So many pluses to keep an eye out for those spent Easter plants this time of year. You'll really reap the benefits and thank us all next spring. We will continue on with the process. We're gonna show you how to store them for the summer, how to place them so the air is constantly circulating. And then of course, in the fall, we will take you along as we plant them. So just a great old fashioned tip. A little bit of trivia for you. Tulips came over from Asia in the 1600s, and they were one of the most expensive gifts you could give someone. They were so high priced because they were this rare, beautiful flower. Then by the 1700s, they were widely popular. People were painting them. They were just a symbol of status. In this century, we just look at them as a common bulb that you can buy anywhere. But I challenge you to really look at a tulip and see the intricate beauty of these flowers. Of course, we always encourage you to wear gloves when you are gardening and handling bulbs or anything like that. We hope you can find some of these bulbs and be with us on this journey. Now, the next thing we wanna share with you is a super grocery haul. Our parents and our grandparents didn't eat what they felt like. <laughs> they shopped according to price and sales. And we emphasize this all the time. Shop items in season. Shop loss leaders, shop clearance racks. Don't just go in and say, I'm going to have a pot roast on Friday and end up paying $9 a pound for a piece of beef. Look at prices, compare prices, and go in with an attitude of, what would my grandmother have bought in this store? What would she have made for her meals for the week? And we encourage the use of old-fashioned cookbooks from the 40s. I have a plethora of them, and we go through them all the time for really low-cost meal ideas. But today, we're just going to be shopping our local shop, right? But they had some great loss leader sales. We're also cashing in a rain check. So just a great little haul. Let's get right to it. Here is our small ShopRite haul. We are going to be heading south in a short while, so we didn't want to buy too much fresh 
produce, but we did want to get those loss leaders. So the first thing we got was the Scott 20 pack of bathroom tissue. This was $13.99, which is a great price because that's definitely less than a dollar a roll. When these used to go on sale, they used to be $11.99. Now, I haven't seen that in a very long time. We did buy something we normally don't buy, and that is some Eggo frozen waffles. They were $1.50 a box with the special digital coupon. These are going to go right to our son's house. He loves these, but they're so expensive, we never buy them. So this will be a treat for him. We did buy four packages of the Hanover Farms, two of the chopped spinach, and two of the Petite Broccoli Florette. 10 and 12 ounce packages. They were $1.49. I love this brand. They are farm raised, sustainably grown, and that makes me super happy. Paul will take them out of these bags and he will food savor them. And that keeps them so fresh. We do egg cleaning products to our food budget, palm olive antibacterial, $1.99 for 20 ounces. Hellman's was on sale again this week for $2.99, so we bought an extra one for the pantry. This is good till 2025, so that was great. Tomatoes on the vine were 99 cents a pound, so we got four of those. My mangoes are back! <laughs> 50 cents, they are huge. Look at the size of these. They were four for $2, a great deal. Now, Memorial Day is coming up and we will probably host a small barbecue, bowl and basket, ice cream, $1.50 for this one and a half quart container. So we got some chocolate chip cookie dough and we got some butter pecan. What I'm thinking for dessert for Memorial Day is an ice cream bar, always think ahead. If you see items like this on sale and you know a holiday or a celebration is coming up, buy it if you have the room and put it away. Bacon, yes we eat bacon. <laughs> Smithfield, the 12 ounce package were $2 a piece and you were allowed to get two and actually these look really good. They'll go right into the freezer. Then if you remember our last food haul, we wanted to buy Purdue chicken wings and they didn't have them, so we got a rain check. The rain check was for $1.99 a pound. We were allowed to buy four, but we only got three. Right now, the wings are $3.99 a pound. That is why I'm always telling you when something goes on sale, stock up. So we got three packages of these wings. Paul will take them out of these packages and he will food savor them as well. It just keeps food fresher longer. So here is our little food haul. Not too much, picked up those lost leaders. So excited to have a mango. So I encourage you to shop the sales as always. We ended up with 15 pounds of chicken wings for $30. All other grocery items came to $38. Grand total, $68. We always encourage you to prep your food to put away as soon as you are done unpacking. Here are the vegetables Paul took out of the package and he put them through the food saver and he divided the chicken wings into packages and now they are ready for the freezer as well. It keeps the frost off of them. Just a great way to preserve your food. One of the biggest ways our grandparents and our parents saved on money was by cooking from scratch. And you know we talk about this all the time. And they also didn't waste a scrap of food. And Paul and I are really big on zero waste food cooking, meaning we look through our refrigerator, our pantries, our freezers, and find little bits and pieces of different food items and then use them 
to create mouth-watering, company-worthy meals. And today we are doing just that. So let's turn the camera around, get into the kitchen, and make a yummy meal from just leftover items we happen to have. Here you go. We have a lot of leftovers, so let's see what we can make. I'm thinking lemon orzo soup. I have a bunch of baby carrots. We had gotten these for a dollar, a big bag on St. Patrick's Day, so these need to be used up. I have a half a cup of orzo, and you can find orzo where regular pasta is sold. Now we're gonna cook this separately because if we were to add it to our soup, there would be no broth left. Orzo absorbs so much. Some Italian herb seasoning. I've got a stalk of celery. We're gonna need some lemon juice. This lemon we zested for a pie I made at Easter, but the lemon is still good. We're gonna use some juice from here. I've got about a half of an onion. I had some frozen spinach in the freezer. I'm going to use that. If you have fresh, that's great. I have 32 ounces of my homemade chicken stock. You can use whatever kind of broth or stock you prefer. We grilled chicken the other day and we have two pieces of the breast meat left. So we're gonna dice that up. This is gonna to come together so quickly and so easily, very delicious. We need to remember that even though the weather's getting warmer, Soups are a great, great meal stretcher and a frugal way to use up food. I cut up the carrots, I cut up the celery, and I cut up the onion, put it in the bottom of my soup pot, and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're just going to let this cook and saute, stirring occasionally, for about five or six minutes. The water is boiling. I'm going to add my orzo. We're gonna cook ours about eight minutes, but check what your package says according to cooking time. And then we are going to just take it off and we're gonna drain it once it's cooked and tender. You know, it's always fun to get a little surprise. I'm stirring this and I realize I must have mixed Ditalini pasta with the orzo so we're getting a little ditalini in there with the orzo. It's gonna be great. So the veggies sauteed for about six minutes. The onions are translucent. I forgot to tell you, you're gonna need a clove of garlic, which you're not gonna add till right before we add the broth and after the veggies have sauteed. We're just going to let that garlic cook for about 20 seconds. Keep stirring it. You don't want that to burn. I'm going to take the Italian seasoning, put it right in here now as well, just to get those flavors just a little bit toasty. And we just quickly give it a saute, literally 10 seconds. Now we're going to carefully add our broth. And we're gonna give this a stir. We did a half a recipe because it's only Paul and I. And now we are going to cover this and let it simmer just about 15 minutes or until those veggies are nice and tender. The orzo and the surprise ditalini is cooked, but we do not wanna add this to the broth. We're gonna keep it separate. I cooked it, I drained it. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil. And the reason I am doing this is so that it does not stick together. And while the soup is cooking, we're just gonna let this cool a little bit. Right before we serve the soup, we'll add the ditalini to the bowl. So this is cooked for about 15 minutes. We're going to add our lemon juice. I am going to say start with less. I am just gonna add a little bit and then we'll give it a taste. You can add more, but you can't take it out. And lemon can be a very subjective flavor. We are now going to add our spinach and our chicken and give this a mix. Now, I always tell you we like our soups more like a stew than a soup. Paul's not a big broth fan. 
so you can definitely add more broth to this. Now we're just gonna heat this through for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of our orzo and we're gonna put it on the bottom of this bowl. We're going to ladle some of this delicious soup right over top. This smells like a bright, sunny day. I can't explain it. The lemon, the freshness of the carrots, the celery, so good. But you know what I'm gonna add? Just a little bit of some good Parmesan cheese grated on top. This is a company-worthy meal. The original recipe will be linked down below in our description box. I want to emphasize again not to forget the humble soups and stews that we serve so readily in the wintertime and fall. The warm weather months are still a perfect time to serve these meals. They are a great way to use up what you have and create it into something that tasted nothing like the day before. That's what's so fun about these meals. They're super creative. We had barbecue chicken the night before. Then the following night, we had a lemon orzo chicken soup. Tasted nothing like what we ate the day before. And that's how you want to transform your leftovers. Leftovers get such a bad rap because people will literally just reheat them and serve them again. No, no, no. Be creative. Add them to soups and stews saute them in stir fries, serve them cold over a bed of greens, a salad. There are so many ways you can amplify leftovers so that they are a delicious gourmet meal the second time around. We hope this video was helpful. We hope it was just encouraging on your frugal journey. Today's question of the day. Are you planting a garden this year? Share with us your best gardening tips. What's your gardening? I know this is the first year we're gonna be growing a flower garden. I have never done that. As you can see behind me, these flowers have been in the last several videos. What is so great about them is they are from Trader Joe's and no, this is not sponsored, but Trader Joe's flowers last their bouquets are $3.99 and $6.99. They go all the way up. But I buy a lower priced bouquet. And then what I do is if some of the flowers are wilting or look yucky, I just throw them away. And the bouquet does get smaller, but it's still lovely. And there's something about having fresh flowers in the cold weather. But this year we are actually going to attempt to grow wildflowers. So we're super excited about that. That is something new we're doing. So share what you're doing, any new veggies you're gonna be growing, anything like that. Share it down below and I know it will not only encourage us, but our viewers as well. We thank you again for sharing this time with us. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't come on in we'd love to have you be part of our family we ask you to be well we ask you to be safe and above all we wish you blessings until our next video may god greatly bless you